So we say it is free, free because they shouldn't be under compulsion to give up their land. They should not be threatened by government, nor by private um, investors, nor be intimidated with state um, security apparatus to evacuate and give up their land. That's why it is free. Prior, prior means that you should not just come and start something before you discuss the issues at stake, no. This discussion, this engagement should be done before the commencement of any mining activity, including um, prospecting, including reconnaissance, including uh, exploration. You should not do your exploratory work. And when we are ready to undertake um, full development and production, that's where you try to engage the communities. The key point is prior, before anything else, the community should be informed. They should understand and be willing to give up their land resources should the exploratory outcome, the exploration outcome be economically viable. Informed because you do not just come and tell them there's minerals here, so you have to move or give up your, your land. They should be engaged meaningfully throughout the process so that they'll be well informed about why the government or the investor need their land, what is in it for them, how their needs will be addressed from um, and how their livelihoods or that those land resources will be compensated for the duration, how long that the mine projects um, will go on for. These are all critical information that they need to do. The environmental impact, the socioeconomic impact that we treated in previous models, they should be informed. And even the, the, the use of the process or the gains from the mineral um, exploitation. They should be informed how they start, they also stand to gain um, from the exploitation um, process. Consent, after all this, it is critical that their consent is received. They should willingly not withhold their consent because if they withhold consent, it means that the mine operation cannot go on. That's why they should be properly informed to be able to understand the gains or the benefits that the mine or the exploitation uh, will bring to them. Hence, their willingness to consent to the activities, their willingness to consent to giving up their land to make way for the mining activity. Now we have the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. I've already mentioned it in previous model. And basically, this is looking at protecting, respecting, and how to remedy should there be an infringement of any right in the course of operation. In our context, in the course of um, mineral exploitation, it is very critical that business and human rights assessment are conducted prior to the commencement of a uh, mine operation. Aside, aside conducting such assessments, it is also critical that periodically over the mine lifespan, human rights, uh, hum business and human rights assessment are conducted at each point of the mineral exploitation to ensure that the business operation or the mine operations are at any point not infringing on anybody's right at any point in time. It is upholding the rights of um, the local communities 
as well as the right of the workers working at the mine site. Canada, we have the Canada's independent ombudsman for corporate responsibility. The, um, the ombudsman um, usually is um, for Canadian companies that operate abroad. This is to ensure that Canadian companies that operate abroad operate in a more sustainable manner operate in a manner that uphold human rights and human integrity, operate in a manner that does not infringe on the rights of um, the local community, infringe on the rights of workers and staff that are working in those companies abroad. Usually the ombudsman work closely with um, the companies, it is accessible and it gives room for reporting cases of abuse or cases of human rights violations in, um, in, 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 in operating countries. The process is more consultative to ensure that it is fair, it is transparent, and to be able to make it, um, um, to make companies accountable for their actions abroad. So when reports are made concerning Canadian companies abroad, um, the, the, the process is consultative. Of course, the ombudsman will listen to the complaining um, entity or individual, and it also reserves the right for the company being accused to respond to the issues raised is to ensure that Canadian companies are not only complying by human rights um, principles in Canada, but more importantly, in developing countries, they uphold the rights of the citizenry. They uphold even environmental rights. They ensure that their business operations do not in any way infringe any right or violate any human rights principle. Then we have the Public-Private Alliance for Responsible Mineral Trade. I will say this is like an extension of the Kimberley process. Whereas the Kimberley process is focused on diamond, this PPA is a multi-stakeholder initiative that is focused on the entire mineral uh, uh, mineral chain, so to speak. It's not reduced to a specific mineral, but on the broader mineral sector to ensure that the supply chain is sanitized and free from violence, illicit trade, and other forms of human rights abuses and rebel groups who find their way into the supply chain in order to fester their criminal activities. Again, just like the Kimberley process, members are compelled to ensure that, um, that where, um, the, the source of their minerals are not sourced from rebel groups, the, 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 the responsibility is on them to ensure that minerals are sourced from the right sources and not in any way contributing to any form of violence or human rights abuse. But then and these are checked based on some international standards that have been set by the PP. So now that we've talked about um, some of the initiatives that have been established broad, globally, regionally, um, to ensure a well-functioning or a well-governed um, extractive sector and extractive uh, so, uh, sector supply chains. Now let us look at some of the international um, bodies that support 
or ensures a world governing um, extractive sector. Number one is the World Bank. Under the extractive global programmatic uh, uh, program support, the World Bank support um, resource rich countries, particularly in developing countries in terms of the governance of the their extractive um, resource sector to ensure that um, the sector is uh, operate in a more uh, sustainable manner to ensure that the sector at the end of the day contributes to um, poverty um, 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 the reduction of extreme forms of poverty or alleviating um, forms of um, poverty and stimulate sustainable economic growth. So this is the, uh, this directly aligns with the objective of the, the World Bank. So um, it provides that support to the resource rich countries. I've mentioned that the natural resources or extractive resources can be a catalyst for industrialization and economic growth and development at this same time, it can drive the economy to its um, worst possible times, um, if not properly managed. So the World Bank, through this program, support developing countries who are which are usually victims of the resource um, case. Because we are unable usually to develop the entire value chain, um, we allow the sector to operate in isolation without extending to positive impact on the traditional economic sectors. At the end of the day, because it operates like in, in such opacity, it festers corruption and other forms of rent-seeking behaviors, which does not sus uh, support sustainable growth. We have a few elites um, prospering to the de detriment of the general um, public. So some of these programs is to support government to invest sustainably, such that in the advent of resource depletion, there will still be um, some productive ventures to support, productive ventures to support public expenditure, just like um, the presence of um, natural resource. Also promoting transparency. Through transparency, you have a well-informed public who are able to deepen accountability and put government on its toes to ensure equitable use of resource um, revenues and contribute to poverty eradication and ensure a more um, uh, sustainable economic growth. Another area that the World Bank support extractive resource governance in um, is, is through the International Finance Corporation, which usually um, the focus usually is on supporting the private sector. Unlike the EGPS we spoke about um, moments ago, this one, um, in addition to providing technical support, also lends to the private sector in developing countries. Then we have the Economic Commission for Africa under the African Union or, um, or under the United Nations. It has well, where we have the Economic Commission for Africa where it's both with the African Union and also under the United Nations. It forms part of the institutional architecture of the um, African Union. It supports um, um, African countries or it supports member states to uh, ensure that um, development challenges are addressed and countries are well able to um, um, foster growth and development. In addition to contributing to the continent's development challenges, um, Addressing the continent's development challenges. It also supports regional integration and also promotes um, international bilateral relationship. 
for the good of um, Africa's development. Now we have the AMDC, which is the African Mineral Development Center. I spoke about the AMV, which is the African Mining Vision. We also talked about the um, African Mineral Resource Governance Framework. So the AMDC is the, to simply put it, the oversight body that oversees the implementation of the African Mining Vision. During the early stages of the uh, the um, advent of the AMV, the AMDC was supporting countries to develop their country mining vision and contextualize the AMV for a meaningful progress in their mineral resource um, management. The center is still working together with countries to ensure that the AMV is still um, implemented uh, um, um, through countries' local laws. The AMV is adopted uh, through various mineral policies to ensure that at the end of the day, there is still economic um, mineral resources is still able to drive that economic transformation the EMV has sought to achieve. Then the African Development Bank. The African Development Bank um, supports the extractive sector through its wing at the African Natural Resource uh, Center. Unlike the bank that lends to um, entities and states, the African Natural Resources does not provide um, such credit facilities, but rather provide technical support to um, government and work um, collaboratively with other regional institutions, the private sector and CSOs to uh, provide technical support uh, to the extractive sector within uh, member uh, states. Now we have um, some identified or popular um, international NGOs that work rigorously to support the extractive sector. We have the Publish What You Pay, which have um, member um, members across um, many countries across the globe. We have Oxfam which has um, established entities in various countries. And we have the Responsible Mining Foundation that always uh, periodically come up with a Responsible Mining Index. We have the Open Society, um, the Natural Resource Governance Institute, NRGI. We have the Global Witness Tax Justice Network, Southern Africa Resource Watch. These are, these are all INGOs that participate um, effectively uh, to support a meaningful governance and management of Africa's natural resources. At the local level, you will also find um, the parliaments, you will also find local media, you will also find impacted communities youth groups, women movements. We have um, popular among them. We have the women in mining, Femnet. We have Roda, Open Herons. All these are key stakeholders that um, keenly uh, support or provide uh, recommendations to um, improve the governance system of the extractive sector. So this brings us to the end of Model 6. We we'll end it here with um, the key identified stakeholders that work to um, strengthen the governance structure. As I always say, um, your questions are welcome. Do well to post your comments. Do well to share your country experiences. 
do well to share your thoughts on this model and uh, we'll be happy to interact with you there. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best.